the Detroit Lions are coming off an impressive win over the Atlanta Falcons, and this was a performance largely dominated by their defense. We're going to talk about that and a whole lot more in this video, starting right now. What's going on everyone? Welcome to the Pride of Detroit YouTube channel. I'm Miko and in this video we are once again going to take a look at some of the biggest takeaways and biggest observations to come out of the Lions win over the Atlanta Falcons. Now the Lions beat the Falcons 20 to 6 yesterday and this was a game that we finally got to see this defense start to show its teeth and really make an impression on this game. But we're going to talk about all of that and a whole lot more as we get this video going. And as you guys already know, these are just some of the biggest takeaways that I had coming out of this game. If there were other takeaways that you guys had from this game that I don't mention, please let me know in the comment section below and let's have a discussion about it. But to kick things off, the number one thing we have to talk about when talking about yesterday's game has to be the defense and the performance that Aaron Glenn was able to put on with this defensive unit. Listen, after coming off of last week's performance, there were a lot of people reasonably frustrated with Aaron Glenn and the strategy that he implemented against the Seahawks. But going into this game against Atlanta, he definitely had this defense firing on all cylinders and getting them to be way more aggressive in this game. We saw this Lions defense hold the Atlanta Falcons to under 200 yards of total offense. I'm talking about 139 yards of passing, only 44 yards of rushing for a total of 183 total yards. Desmond Ritter was never able to get into a rhythm. And all that talk that we heard about Bijan Robinson being a, a, a game breaker and being a true threat to this Lions defense never really materialized. And of course, they had a couple plays here and there. But for the most part, this Atlanta Falcons offense was completely buttoned up the lions were able to pick up seven sacks as a unit with six of those sacks coming from different players aiden hutchinson accounted for two of them while you still got a sack from aline mcneil benito jones charles harris Derek barnes and even jack campbell everybody was getting in on the quarterback and this is something that we've all been waiting to see from this lions defense Again, the offense is something that we've never really had to worry about going into the season. It was always on what could this defense do? And for the first two games of the season, while the Lions were one and one, there were a lot of questions, even from me, about this Lions defensive line. And to see them really get after Desmond Ritter and really start to rattle him and on top of that, not just rattle him, but actually get him to the ground is a great sign of improvement from both Aaron Glenn and this entire defensive unit as a whole. I would say from this game specifically, this is where you finally got to see all three levels of the defense play at tip top shape. And that's including the fact that you had two backup safeties in the game. And yes, Tracy Walker is a former starter, but still, this was a season that we started with both CJ, GJ and Kirby Joseph as your starters. And you went into this game starting both Tracy Walker and Iffy at the safety spots and both of those players great played great obviously tracy dropped us an interception that he would love to have back but for the most part you got great plays out of your safeties you continue to get good plays out of your corners and yes again a couple plays here and there where you probably wish the coverage could have been a little bit better but you still got great plays from your secondary then you look at your linebackers like i said two sacks from two of your linebackers alex anzalone was all over the place putting up some really good hits on Bijan and Tyler Algier. And then we get all the way back to the defensive line, which again, was creating pressure, making things difficult for Desmond Ritter and not giving him a lot of opportunities to run and hurt your defense with his legs. All in all, this was an A plus performance by this defense. And hopefully this is just the beginning of a number of great performances to come as the season continues to roll on. Also, before I move away from the defense, it's also worth noting that this defense held Atlanta without a touchdown. And that's the first time a Lions defense has done that since 2018 in week 14 when the Lions were playing against the Arizona Cardinals. It's been that long. So it's no understatement to say that, hey, 
this defense finally came alive and put together a stellar performance against the Atlanta Falcons. Now, I can't completely move away from the defense without first taking time to highlight two of the better players that were performing yesterday on that side of the ball, and those players being both Brian Branch and Aiden Hutchinson. Brian Branch finished that game with 11 tackles, all solos, three tackles for loss, and three pass breakups. That's impressive performance by a rookie who, again, has been getting a lot of hype since the offseason and is continuing to live up to it. As you guys know, I've already been saying, I've been saying probably since before the season started that I do think Brian Branch has an opportunity to be the defensive rookie of the year. And performances like this are kind of the reason why he may not necessarily have some of the more gaudy stats as far as like sacks or interceptions. Yes, he does have one on the season. But I'm not sure how many more of those he's going to put up on the stat sheet as the season continues to go on. But if he continues to play this way, where he's just showing higher levels of intelligence and he's just showing a better recognition of what he should be doing and just having great flawless play on the field. I have a really strong belief that Brian Branch can continue to kind of build that resume that will make him a really hard player to ignore when it comes to the voters and they're trying to decide who should be the defensive rookie of the year. He played well in coverage. He played well in run support, had an amazing hit on Bijan that eventually was flagged. But even he had the perfect response to that saying like, yo, forget it. Like, I'll take the flag just to be able to showcase to a player like Bijan that like, hey, I'm not scared to tackle you. That's just showing a greater level of maturity from a guy who, again, is a rookie and still for the better, you know, for better sake of words, just is still learning the game or still learning the NFL game. Brian Branch is showing that the moment is never too big for him, and he's continuing to get better week in and week out. And next, we have Aiden Hutchinson. And listen, this is something that I would consider to be a breakout game for Hutch because up until this point, he's been relatively quiet. And not all of it is his fault. I think he's been doing a good job being able to rack up pressures. But today, those pressures finally turned into sacks. He did finish the game with four tackles, two sacks, a pass breakup. I'm sorry, not just one pass breakup, but two pass breakups, a forced fumble and a fumble recovery, along with six more pressures in this game. Hutch has continued to show that growth in his game and being able to be moved all throughout the defensive line, both being able to rush on the outside and on the inside is proving to be a handful for no for any of the offensive linemen that he's gone up against so far in this season. Again, a lot of people were frustrated with this defensive line, but I think specifically it was on most of the other players outside of Hutch because we could all see that he was at least putting forth the effort and trying to at least get to the quarterback, which is why he's near the top of the league in pressures. But in a game like this, he finally was able to put it all together to continue to be able to showcase those different pass rush moves and be able to showcase that he can dominate both on the outside and the inside and was finally able to get home to the quarterback. This is just the start. And now that Hutch has finally started getting the count going on his sack total, I don't expect this to slow down anytime soon as they do have a matchup against Green Bay this week. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Hutch pick up another sack or two in this game. Now, while the defense was very, very impressive in this game, we also have to take out time to highlight some of the things that were happening on the offensive side of the game, because just like how the defense had some injuries and some key players had to step up, the offense also had a handful of injuries, and that required other players to step up as well, specifically when you're looking at the likes of both Jameer Gibbs and Sam Laporta. Now, Jameer Gibbs finally got the bulk of the carries with David Montgomery being out, and after being able to pick up 17 rush attempts, he was able to turn that into 80 rushing yards and didn't necessarily quite find his rhythm in the passing game, but at least showed the growth that I think a lot of us have been looking for in regards to how he was able to, you know, rush both on the outside and on the inside. And as the game kind of got started going on further into the fourth quarter, he was finally able to break one of those bigger runs where, again, you just see the potential of a running back like Jameer Gibbs not being afraid of contact, not being afraid to work in between the tackles. And if he sees daylight, willing to take that and make it into bigger gains. It's also worth mentioning that going into this game, this was highly anticipated being the battle between him and Bijan. And when you start to look at the stat totals and you start to look at their overall performance in the game, Jameer Gibbs just came out on top and he seemed to have the better performance all around when looking at this game. And honestly, his performance may have been even better if it weren't for the fact that the Lions were suffering from some injuries on their offensive line, which we'll get to in a minute in this video. But outside of Jameer Gibbs, we also got to continue to highlight Sam Laporta, who is 
much like Brian Branch continuing to stack good game on top of good game, going into his third game of the season and once again racking up more than five receptions as he finished this game with eight receptions, 84 yards, and got his first touchdown of the season. Sam is a guy, once again, building a great relationship and rapport with Jared Goff and someone that Goff clearly trusts in a number of clutch moments. And if he can continue to, again, elevate his play, much like Brian Branch, and continue to showcase his skill set, it wouldn't surprise me that if he's able to stay healthy and continue this level of performance, that by the end of this season, we might be talking about Sam Laporta being a front runner for Offensive Rookie of the Year, just by the way he's been able to elevate his game each and every week so far in this season. Now, while there were a number of good things to happen, both on the defensive and offensive side of the football in this game, it's also worth highlighting that there were some low moments in this game as well. And one of those low moments coming in the form of injuries. Now, the Lions were already coming into this game with a number of injuries at some key positions. And that injury bug didn't stop biting in this game either, as the Lions suffered a couple different key injuries on their offensive line, as both Matt Nelson and backup Dan Skipper both went down with key injuries that kept them out for the rest of the game, which eventually led to Colby Sorsdahl having to play right tackle in this game. Now, fortunately, the Lions have been carrying Colby Sorsdahl, and he's been showing a level of progress, even dating back to camp and showing that he was somebody that was viable as somebody that you could trust to play a couple of snaps here and there if the situation called for it. And that's very much what happened in this game. And if I'm being honest, I thought Colby Sorsdahl did okay. Like, not out of this world, but at least show that he's viable in this situation, only allowing two pressures and two of those pressures probably being some of the worst pressures he allowed. But it's something where at least you saw, you know, hints that he can play at this level. He still needs some refinement. But once he kind of got his bearings under him, things seem to be smooth sailing for the most part. But with that said, this injury bug that is going around the Lions and specifically their offensive line is something that could really start to hamper this offense. We all know that this is the number one strength of this offense, even above the likes of having a play caller like Ben Johnson and having a quarterback like Jared Goff, who has been playing out of his mind these first three weeks. If the offensive line isn't able to hold up, everything slowly starts to crumble. With that said, hopefully you will be getting healthy as the weeks kind of go on. You're on a short week having to play Green Bay on Thursday. But if the likes of Taylor Decker is able to come back, if you're able to get Halapoli Vati Vati back in time, that could help this Lions offensive line get back to a really happy place where they have enough healthy bodies and could probably start rebuilding, you know, the depth that they have at that position so that they can have viable backups going forward. And last but not least, the another big takeaway that I had from this game, and I hate to end this video on a sour note, is once again on the Lions offensive side. Again, the defense played out of its mind, and I think they played a full complete game for four quarters. The Lions offense, I can't necessarily say the same thing, and that's mainly because of a really poor third quarter that they had. In the third quarter, the Lions had four possessions, and of those four possessions, they were only able to get one first down, zero touchdowns, zero field goals, and an interception. That's just not going to be good enough when we're talking about the long haul of this season. Again, defense played out of its mind, and I think we are going to start to see this defense play at a level that it's like this that's barely consistent. But at the same time, it's also going to be imperative for this offense to be relied upon in a number of different games. There's not really any way to guarantee that your defense is going to hold teams without a touchdown. And in that situation, you're still going to need your offense, if not putting up points, at least extending drives and not giving the offense too many opportunities to find a rhythm or simply from just keeping your defense on the field too much. Fortunately, in this game, it never bit the Lions in the butt. But it's something to kind of keep in mind, in mind, especially when we're talking about the Lions already having injuries on this offensive line and what type of impact that could have on their ability to extend drives and more importantly, continue to be able to put points up on the board so that they can have comfortable leads going into each of these games. But with all of that said, a win is a win. You never apologize for winning. And while this game isn't necessarily perfect, there was a number of positive signs that come out of this, both looking at the defense, looking at certain defensive players, looking at some of your offensive rookies finding the rhythm. Not to mention, I didn't even highlight the fact that both Jared Goff and Amon Ross St. Brown continue to just churn out productive games. Yes, Goff did have an interception, but for the most part, he had complete command of this game, also being able to throw for a touchdown and run for one. There are a lot of good things to come out of this win, 
But at the same time, I'm sure Dan Campbell is also saying this to his team that they still have yet to play their best football. And that is something that's still somewhat encouraging as the season goes on. Once the Lions are able to click on all cylinders, this is a team that I think will be able to have firm control of this division and make a strong push for the playoffs. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. Let me know what you think. What were some of your biggest takeaways to come out of the Lions win over the Falcons? Was it something that I mentioned here? Is there something that you disagree with? Or was there something I didn't mention at all? Also, if you're looking for any more information on the Lions or any more information from the game that took place yesterday, be sure to check out the Pride of Detroit website. And like always, if you are new to this channel and you have yet to subscribe, be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. That way you can be notified every time we upload a brand new video to this channel. Once again, everybody, I'm Miko. Thanks for checking out this video and I'll catch you in the next one.